I was fascinated by the book because I think it deals with something that's been becoming a currency in maybe the last five, ten years, which is a, uh, maybe a reclamation of the word um, leadership into management. Um, for a couple of decades, as indeed um, leadership institutes and demonstrate, leadership was the thing. And I always understood that leadership was uh, doing the right things and management was doing things right. But what being the boss talks about is the idea that um, leadership is actually an integral part of management. So management is the overall category. And the focus of the book is um, in three parts on uh, managing uh, yourself and on managing your network and on managing your team. The idea that you can manage yourself um, is not the idea that you can be taught management, but it's the idea that you can learn um, management. And inherently, um, if you can manage yourself, you can manage others. The premise of the book really is that uh, most managers fail to become great managers, and that it's a journey, uh, it's a lifelong effort to learn about yourself and of course learn the lessons of what happens to you on the journey. For me, I would say that I, in one sense I'm sorry I didn't read this book 20 years ago, um, but it's actually not a book for first time managers, it's a book for seasoned managers. This idea that leadership is part of management is focused on the idea that the great manager doesn't get things done uh, themselves. Other people do the work and we're responsible for it. So that sounds really easy. But the book is all about the fact that it's really difficult. And it's most often difficult because the people who become managers, um, whether they're contro called control freaks or whether they're just not very empathetic, it's they usually got promoted because they were very good at something. And being very good at something is totally self-contained. It's about you. But management is about other people. And when you try to manage other people in order to get the job done and you're responsible for it I and mean, you're the one going to be called in if it doesn't go right you need not only to influence what people do but what they think and in order to cope with the idea of what people think you really know need to know about what you think yourself so this idea of the journey this idea of constant review of perspectives of your own personal philosophy um, is what the book is about. It's structured very unusually. Um, there's a character called Jason Pedersen. And Jason's life for 24 hours, well, well, for a working day, his first working day is the introduction to each chapter in the book. And so we, the first chapter starts out at 7.25 in the morning and Jason's just been promoted to manage for the first time as a publisher in a big publishing company. And well, just let's deal with the first hour because it really goes to the heart of management. The first hour is pretty chaotic. I mean, he takes up his phone messages. He takes up some texts, some emails. He tries to work out what to do. He has a number of mini crises to deal with, and this is only the first hour. And the main one is that he needs a whole lot of sales staff to launch a new product for which he's responsible. And so he's going to need to get in touch with a whole lot of people because he's got no sales staff. So he's got a crisis, you might say. So what that is, I think, is a metaphor for the nature of the day that we all experience as managers. The more senior we become, the more busy, if you like, our days are. The more we do little things, the more our interaction is with many people whom we touch lightly. Um, I think the more senior you become, the shorter your phone calls become, the shorter your emails become, the shorter your meetings become, because there are more of them. The more you've got to do, so you need to be very, very efficient. And so this connection between efficiency and effectiveness um, again goes to the heart of the book, which is that it's um, it's a system. I mean, you need to be systematic uh, to be a manager. Essentially, it's process, um, as well as all the other things that I've talked about. And you can learn it. So it's very refreshing to think about the idea that your life as a journey is um, about, um, of course, accommodating um, whether we call them mistakes or missteps or bad calls that the accumulation of all of those things is what makes you very good. 
the call in the title of the three imperatives for becoming a great leader manage yourself, manage your network, manage your team. Your network is not just those people within your own organization who you have effectively nominated. You're going to mentor them. You realize they're, they're the doers. Doers do. So if your job is to have other people do things for which you're responsible, you obviously want doers. And the network of who they are, of course, can extend way beyond your own organization. And the idea of thinking about managing your network is something that's you know, easily taken for granted. It's not just your Rolodex. I mean, it's much more complicated now because we can um, we can actually avail of of people so easily. I mean, I'm doing this um, you know live for a little camera, and uh, anybody can see it all over the world. So your network is now a huge opportunity, and there are different ways to uh, approach it. Um, the the third part then is is managing your team, and you know, to be a team leader. Um, is to be a great manager and uh, I like the analogy the sporting analogy you can't afford anybody on your team who's just not playing to their full capacity in every position the orchestra model is also a great model you know, because you really can't afford to have anybody playing an instrument at a lower level than others it's got to be all together and yet larger organizations um, maybe have places to hide and um, or it's less obvious when you're not performing and so the issue for the great manager is that you're actually a coach and a judge and that you know there are a lot of mediocre managers and some good ones and very few great ones um, and great managers understand that it's their responsibility uh, to make the decisions that are necessary to make the organization great yeah, I remember my father my dear father saying to me when I first became director. He said, um, you know, Brian, when you're given authority, you must use it. And I thought a lot about that, that, you know, when you have the responsibility in a job, you've got to accept the responsibility. You've got to think very carefully about what you personally are going to do with it, because it's you yourself that has that responsibility. And it is for a period of time. So do I recommend the book? I, I do. Um, I think it's a very thoughtful book, extremely well structured. Frankly, I found the Jason episodes a little bit tiring, but maybe just because of what he was going through for the day. Um, but thinking about how they apply, um, that lesson of controlling all those little pieces of your day and maximizing them and putting them all together, um, potentially uh, can make one a great leader.